So using the de Broglie equation is probably one of my more favorite parts of general chemistry. And we're going to see that the ideas put forth by de Broglie are going to lead directly to quantum mechanics. So that's where we're going to be heading in terms of this course and in uh, the discussion that we are having. And quantum mechanics ends up having a huge effect on uh, chemistry and how we think about molecules. And so just remember the whole idea of quantum mechanics starts kind of with de Broglie's equation. So what happened was Einstein came along and people understood that light was a wave. And to, dis to solve uh, the problem with the photoelectric effect, Einstein said that light also acts as a particle. And what de Broglie did said, well, you know, particles kind of the same idea, they act like, part, you know, particles act like particles, but then he put forth the ideas that something that's a particle also has a wavelength associated with it. So all matter has, uh, if it's in motion, has a wavelength associated with it. And this is a very important idea. So he said that anything, you know, anything with mass, if it's moving, there is a wavelength associated with it. And this is the same wavelength that we're talking about, uh, like we were talking about with light. Uh, so here's uh, the Broglie's equation. And the wavelength of whatever we're talking about is directly related to the mass of uh, the particle. And you got to remember the mass needs to be in kilograms. So this is one of the, the, the kind of the traps here. And this is because our energy is in joules. And remember, a joule is a kilograms meters squared per second squared. So a joule, when you see it, has a kilogram as a unit cleverly hidden inside of there. So you have to remember that the mass that we use of our object or our particle needs to be in kilograms. U is just the speed of our object in um, uh, meters per second. And uh, what we're going to find out uh, is that really Broglie's equation only comes into play when we're dealing with small objects that are moving at a very uh, high rate of speed. That's the only time where the wavelength actually um, is at a size that we can kind of comprehend. So the classic use of de Broglie's equation is looking at the wavelength of um, an electron. So I have an electron and I say it's traveling at 5% of the speed of light. So um, here I, I take 5% of our speed of light. So I'm saying that my electron is moving at 1.5 times 10 to the seventh meters per second. And we know what the mass is of an electron, but remember I need to convert that mass to kilograms. If I take these numbers in, so H is Planck's constant. Uh, so I get that off the, the front of the exam. I and now know what the mass is of an electron and I told you it's going about 5% um, of the speed of light. Um, and now if I calculate the wavelength of an, uh, now I can calculate the wavelength of an electron, I get it, it to be about uh, 48.5 picometers, which is uh, still very small or 4.85 times 10 to minus 11th meters. Still a very small number, but it's in the scope that we can comprehend because um, most atoms are about 50 to 300 picometers. And this is an important idea because, um, because we understand that electrons actually act as waves, we're able to create electron microscopes. And um, we can use electrons as light. And because their wavelength is so small, we can actually use electron microscopes to image individual atoms. So that's uh, something. Uh, if you're interested, you can go and look up, but we have been able to take pictures of literal individual atoms inside of molecules now by using electron microscopes and other techniques. But this is the idea and really what we're going to be applying from de, Broglie, de Broglie's equation is that electrons do have a wavelength. They are a particle, and, but they still have wave-like properties. And we're going to take the fact that electrons have a wavelength and, and apply it to other things. And that, once again, is going to lead to uh, quantum mechanics. And like I said, anything with a mass that is moving has an associated wavelength. But unless it's very small and moving very fast, the wavelength becomes uh, uncomprehendable. So uh, another example, and you can try to take these numbers and uh, check my answer here, but if I have a baseball that weighs about 150 grams and it's being thrown at 90 miles per hour, the baseball actually has a, you know, technically has a wavelength, but that wavelength is very, very small. So I calculated a wavelength, wavelength of being 1.2 times 10 to the minus 34th meters. So 
the the baseball does have a wavelength, but the wavelength is so small that we really can't even comprehend it. So most of what de Broglie's equation about is looking at the wavelength of electrons, and we will be seeing that, uh, discussing that more as we continue on in this textbook.